Sometimes you need the furry creature you're making to have gross, unkempt hair, well, just like I need it on Hogger. Now in this video, I'll show you what I did to turn this beautiful fur into a smelly looking mess. Let's make some monsters. Let's talk about weathering fur. When I started planning my hogger build, I knew I wanted him to be very messy and weathered. The whole thing of him. He lives in a forest, he probably doesn't care for hygiene, and basically I just wanted to I wanted him to look like he smelled really bad. So I did some tests, and in this video I'll show you the process that I came up with and used on Hogger. That you can see this is his neck. You can see that it's a little dirty and unkempt. Um, I'll show you how I did it, and then at the end I'll do some more experiments to maybe give you some ideas on how you can approach your creature build. Let's get this ritual of summoning started. Here's what you'll need. You'll need some fake fur. You'll need some scissors and paint, a, a stiff bristle paintbrush, um, also a pet brush, like a slicker brush is very good to have, and hair gel. And also if you want to get fancy, you can use an airbrush. I did that a little bit on Hogger. Okay, the first step that we have to do is physically distress the fur, and I did this with just a simple pair of scissors. Um, you take your fur, and it has this very nice fur direction, and with laying it all flat like that, I take the scissors up into it and chop just randomly up into the fibers. I don't want to go across the fibers like, like this, but just up into it and just do that everywhere. What this does is it just creates an unevenness. All these fibers are kind of the same length. This just adds a little unevenness. And when you get so far and you're covered in fibers, remember my trick from last video that I like to have a shop back nearby. And a brush. It's getting staticky. So you can see already that the fur is starting to have some unevenness, some texture to it. And you just keep going until you reach the look that you want. And don't worry, it, it well it, it since this fur has the gradation of colors where the top fibers are light and the bottom fibers are dark, it'll kind of look like it has little spots everywhere. But that's okay, you won't notice that um, after we get to the later steps. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. So you can see that. I'm going to go a little farther. Okay, so that, that's about as far as I took it on Hogger, just like these uneven spots everywhere. Um, but we're going to flip it around now and take it and brush it the other way. 
Now, now you see more of the effect of what we're going for. Like the, the volume is up. You can see it's a little more wild. You can see the unevenness. You can even go farther than this and have it really uneven and kind of sparse, but that, that is kind of what we're going for. Because remember on Hogger's neck area, I did put the fur inverted like that. So the fur direction was heading up so I could get a more wild look. And when you're happy with the, the physical distressing of cutting the fur uneven, you, um, you can move on to painting it. Now, to get Hogger's spots, I used this paintbrush. Um, I got it in a whole bunch of really cheap paintbrushes that my sister gave me for Christmas one year. Best present ever. Um, yeah, I like it because I, I think it's a children's painting brush, but all these brush fibers are really straight. They are very stiff, so if you're pushing it, you, know, it, you have a lot of force that you can push down on it, and that'll help you get deep into the fibers. So for Hogger's spots, I just took some umber paint, some raw umber. And I dipped it in there and I just started going to town by pounding it into the fur. can change the colors and whatnot. And I wasn't afraid to go too heavy with the paint. In fact, I went really heavy on Hogger and he has clumps from the paint in his hair still. And that's fine. The clumps added to the mess. a spot in the fur. That's one way you can paint in markings is just using a brush and slamming it in there. Another way you can add paint uh, is to airbrush. So this is my airbrush. It's actually a really affordable brand if you're looking to just get an airbrush to try. It's master, I'll leave it a link in the description below of what one it is. Um, but it, it's a really simple airbrush. It works well enough for what I want to do. I haven't tried an expensive or nice brand yet, so I can't talk about the differences or the disadvantages, but it's the one I use and it's the one I've been using for years. So for, for this, what I wanted to do to Hogger's Fur is add a little bit of a reddish tint to it. It was starting to get too much yellow and brown. I wanted to add some more interest, so just mixed up some acrylic uh, paint in water, uh, made it like a dirty reddish color, and that's what I'm gonna use. So I just put a little of that red paint in, and you can see it comes out really fine. And I'm just gonna use that to kind of just add some color. Uh, you can like flip the, the fur around, get it into all the different areas. Until it starts looking like that. If you get too much, you can wipe it off real quick. But after that dries, it'll just add like a little bit of variation to the fur. 
And you can add as much or as little as you want. You can go over with different colors. On Hogger's neck, I gradated up towards his mane with a brown color to just for some visual interest. You can do anything like that. So I'm going to let this dry and then we'll come back and add the most exciting of the weathering steps. And now that that's dry, you can see I've, I've brushed it back down so it's nice and pretty again. Now comes my favorite part, the part that will really make everything pop, and that's the hair gel. So just like you would with your hair, you just squeeze out a whole bunch and run it through the hair. You can style it any way you want. And it does take a lot, so I recommend getting the cheapest brand you can find. I got this at Walmart and it was the cheapest, biggest bottle I could find. And if you flip it back over, you know, that's looking pretty gross. But it smells really good. Luckily with cosplay, you don't have to smell like a wet dog to look like a wet dog. So that's pretty much it. You can see all the nice texture on there. You can see. That, and that will dry pretty much just like that. And even when it's been dried for a long time and uh, even when it's been dried for a long time and kind of gets brushed out, you can always add more hair gel or you can, or, or it pretty much stays clumped really well. So there you can see we went from this really nice fur to this really gross fur in not that long at all. So that's what I did for Hogger's hair, but there were some things that I also found while I was doing my experience, experiments and also things that I found out that I wanted to try um, that I'm gonna experiment with right now. So we're gonna put this aside and come back to this. So this was an experiment I did. I shaved it down to see how shaved fur would react to all the weathering. This side is the hair gel and you see that's kind of, it's been sitting there for a long time so it's not as clumpy but it's still pretty good. I could just put more hair gel in there and it would be just fine. This other side though, that was done by a heat gun. Now heat these are synthetic fibers so they're plastic so the heat gun curls it and if you look at that, that kind of looks like matted hair. So if you wanted to do um, a, a matted look, that would be a great option. Um, there's another thing that I, I kind of thought to try just right before I started recording, and that's sandpaper. What does sandpaper do to fur? Um, while I was weathering the rest of Hogger's clothing, uh, sandpaper really came in handy. So let's, I haven't done this before. Let's see what it looks like. Well, it's not doing much. It's pulling out a lot of fuzz. It's kind of very subtly curling the fibers, if you can see that. Just the friction and the, the heat and the stretching is kind of making them curl up a little bit. That's kind of cool. Like you can see hopefully flat, but then this side it, it curls up. It just sort of twists them a little bit. And that's actually really cool if you need some subtle weathering. Now when I was doing my project Greymane, uh, he was a king, so I was afraid to even try weathering any bit of him because I'm like, well kings, they don't need any weathering. They're nice and perfect and they keep themselves well. They're pretty, I don't know. 
Um, so I ended up not doing any weathering, which is a disservice. You can just, everything to make it look real has a little bit of a weathered effect. So maybe this is some nice, subtle weathering you could do to kind of just distress the fur physically. It, it's very subtle, but I kind of like it. One last test I want to do was actually something that I picked up from Cosplay America. I went to a panel put on by Don't Touch My Milk Cosplay. You can find them on Instagram. But they were doing a panel on weathering fabrics, and they had this really clever idea that I really wanted to try on Hogger's feet, but I kind of chickened out and ran out of time. So I want to try it now on this piece of fur. This was one of my early test pieces for Hogger as I was developing the, uh, the, the hair gel and stuff. This, I actually used Vaseline in it to clump the hair. Um, bad idea, Vaseline won't dry, hair gel will, but it had the same effect. Anyway, the technique was using this air dry clay. Um, and you can find it in several colors like white, gray, and terracotta and they used it, soaked a little bit in water, and then smeared it all over their clothes to simulate like any mud that is on the character. So, sliding this aside, I did put a little piece in water, so it's like getting pretty nasty, and I'm just gonna smear it on the fur and see what happens. Now, see, this, could get pretty nasty, but you know, when when creatures get muddy, they do get pretty nasty, so. This is really cool, <laughs> actually. I can't wait to see what this looks like when it's dry. That's really nasty. It's like, makes it muddy, but it's it will dry out and won't be quite as gross as mud. But yeah, and your hands get disgusting too, but that's okay. Look how cool this is. Like if you have like a really, like this would be good on feet or if you have furry leg wraps for your Viking character or something, uh, this would make very good to go on the bottom edge of your fur and around your feet because that's, that's where mud would get. Maybe you could smear some into the knees or the butt or something just something that would be in contact with the ground that looks way cool i'm so excited and when that dries out it'll be hard and clumpy and like actually move like it was dried dirt in there that's way cool i need to add this to haga because that's way awesome Look how cool this turned out. This is all dry, so it's all really crunchy and clumpy. It did dry to be gray, just like it advertised. This side I took and I painted some brown on top of it to see if I could preserve that like more wet mud look. But this is really cool, because not a lot of people that realize that some dirt is very light colored and doesn't doesn't make things dark, it makes things pale. So that's really neat. I'm really pleased with how that turned out. So thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I really hope it helps you with your own projects. If you do some tests and figure out an awesome new way to weather fur, please leave me a comment and let me know. There really isn't that much information out there about how to do this, so let's, let's share all that we can. Um, so if you want to see more of my hogger videos, you can click the card right now and uh, see my whole entire playlist of videos. 
Um, if you liked this tutorial and want to see more, please subscribe and then hit the bell so you'll be notified the moment I post my next video. I'm Kazool, reminding you to embrace your inner beast.